awesome. You guys are awesome. I love you so much. All right, so our next guest is a former U.S. Marine who spent two decades in Washington, D.C. doing national security before starting a merchant bank. <laughs> now, he's drawing from these experiences. He decided to write an entire trilogy. It's called Resurrection, and it's a series of novels that tackle government, Wall Street, and the financial crisis. So please put your hands together for author Bill Wisecarver. <laughs> Okay, hold on, I'm gonna scoot this chair a little closer. Are you kidding? You've got cool oh, conspiracies to talk about. You've got to be eye uh, contact, right? That's, how, that's how I tell the, people who lie into me, right? That. I know. We've got to get into that right away. All right, so first off, let's talk about this book, Resurrection. Why did you write it? Basically, I wrote it because I, uh, as a reaction to what I was watching on the news and uh, watching on uh, the, talking to average Americans, especially those under 35, you know, they, they, they were saying to me, somehow the sound bites that we were getting, they're not making any sense to me and they're not adding up. Uh, because of my background, because of where I've been and some of the things that I did, I said, I'm gonna start writing. So I did, and the first time I did, I tried to do a, uh, a history of America uh, post-World War II. And then I was diplomatically told that that was about as interesting as a math high school textbook. <laughs> yeah, it could be. I, I mean, there, it's a great uh, history, you know, but yeah, it's hard yeah, to do you know, it right. 25 it's years in the national security infrastructure, that's, that's what it does to you. So basically what I did was I took, uh, I took that, I went back to the drawing board, and um, I came up with the resurrection. And the resurrection is basically, if you know the movie Fight Club, Oh, of course, and yeah. Wrap, wrap that it. up. Wrap that up in the Matrix. Number and one then, thing don't talk about. And Michael. then it follows the plot line of, um, of probably the greatest philosopher of the 20th century, Jimi Hendrix. Oh, and, yeah. and his book. And, and, I was going to say Michael Day Montaigne, yeah, yeah. but you know, it could be Jimmy. But, uh, but uh, his, his work of uh, Up From the Skies, Acts as Bold as Love, second yeah. track, first side. Which shows you how old I am. No. <laughs> <laughs> show us your man bun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's one of the pleasures of being, uh, being, uh, being this old, man. I just, I can't get okay. there from here. Okay, so would you say this book is full of conspiracies? Not really. Um, what it does is, what it does is it, it blows the myths of the zeitgeist um, that's surrounding us. Um, if you really want to, and, and see, you can get real serious on this, um, but the fact of the matter is, is that we are living in a new age, in the birth of that new age. That age started about 115 years ago, okay? It was, uh, the br there was a breach in the birth for about 50 years in the worst war that human history has ever seen, okay? But it's exploded now, it's come out. Yeah. And unfortunately, um, the powers that be, the economic infrastructure, the political process that we know today, they're using 19th century geopolitical and um, economic theories to try to run a world and yeah. especially take the opportunities that our new generation has, that, that this generation, the follow-on generations are so, going to have. Okay, so I know this, uh, this, is a, this is the first of a trilogy. It's a long book in itself, but it has a lot of different topics. But if you could narrow it down kind of to the top, so say, three main topics that you think people should really be thinking about, what would they be? It, it's really about the political process itself. Um, and the fact is, is that when people say it doesn't add up, you're right, it doesn't. Now, what's the next step? The next step is critical thinking. This is why I called book one, Americans Awaken. What I tried to do is just go straight across the board and show where, how to start that process of critical thinking, how to wake right. up to what's going on around us. Make up your own decision and your own mind and then get out there and find the people. Um, you know, uh, find the people that are going to bring you to a new, uh, that new level, that new step. Bring in those alternative theories. Okay. Bring in the new leadership. You Jump know? on your social media account, right? Kyle, can you rally up a revolution or anything <laughs> while we're hanging? <laughs> I mean, I can try. <laughs> okay, but anyways, um, so tell me about uh, some of the things that, like some of the main topics in the, in the yeah. world. And one of them is uh, I blow kind of the myth of uh, high frequency trading, HFTs. Oh, right, right, I mean, right, right. Basically what you're talking about there is that they have, mainly through the options market, They've basically divorced the stock market from any economic reality that we're dealing with. And that's why people are sit sitting there going, they can't understand it. We're, we have more Americans falling into poverty today than, than in our history. 
We have people lowering their standard of living, but everybody's saying, oh, the economy's doing great. Well, the HFTs are basically microscopic arbitrage of, of without any divorce from the intrinsic value of the stock itself, and it follows the globe at the speed of light. It's mm. computerized trading, working at the nanosecond. $1.7 trillion is going from New York, then it goes to Tokyo, then it goes to Hong Kong, then it goes to, then it goes to Singapore, uh, Mumbai, Bahrain, Frankfurt, London, you know, and, and money's and, world travel, and, and, yeah. it, and it is doing it's that 24 hours a day. Yeah. And it's what is it doing? To Tijuana. I don't even know. You know oh, man. You can get okay. all kinds of trouble. Okay, so I don't, I don't like. There's a lot of topics that brings up, but you're talking about sort of the important thing being that the general population should have better critical thinking skills, and they should try to focus on that. Um, like for the audience, for all of us, like what, what does that mean? Because I know I get my news from you know CNN sure. or a local newspaper, but like what should I be doing if I want to be more when you thinker. hear uh, when you hear something that doesn't make sense, you're probably right. And <laughs> and now with in the information age, you know, go to Wikipedia, go and look at it for yourself. We have to start demanding from our political leaders not sound bites anymore, but real issues, uh, solutions that are going to help us, going to change our way of life, because those solutions are out there. We have the money. We have the most advanced civilization. In, in human history. Um, we have everything going for us. We have the most well-educated, highest standard of living, greatest uh, people here right now in this country, and we, it doesn't have to be this way. Right. I mean, as an example, we're spending 100, or for about seven years, we spend $120 billion a month to fight tribal warlords sitting in the mountains um, uh, who seem to be, uh, the only thing that they want to do is drive their people back into the 13th century. Right. Okay, Why aren't we spending that money on uh, alternative energy generation? Right. How, why the infrastructure of the country. Exactly. Yeah, why, well, how much are we doing that? How much, yeah. are we, how much are we putting into education? I will say that bugs me. Yeah. I've thought about yeah, that a few times. I mean, like, so, but that's just well, it. What do we do? Like, I don't know what to do. Like, I vote for people. Like, am I supposed to vote or am I supposed to? We like, have to demand from demand our, our political leaders. Or, like, we have to. We, you know, I mean, you, basically, we have to. We have to demand from our political leaders. I mean, it's just as an example in this coming election. Okay. Okay. I don't care who you vote for. I don't care if it's Democrat, uh, Republican, if you're liberal, conservative. What you need to say is, we want a firm commitment from you that we are going to reestablish the financial regulatory environment that we had had for about 100 years before that you guys nullified in 2000, up to, uh, from about 1990 to 2002, mm -hmm. okay? Do that one thing, just, just that one thing, and things will start falling, uh, falling Cause like, cause I, like I don't wanna be, I don't wanna be angry, you know? Like I don't wanna be like, oh, I'm always so upset with everything and like writing a letter, but also like I want like things to be cool, so what should I do? Yeah, well, if you, you want things to be cool, I, you know, no, no, I, and I, I totally understand. But the way for it to be cool is being serious doesn't mean that you have to be mad or be yelling mm. and screaming. Okay, okay, I like where you're going. Now. You just need to understand what's going on, you know. I lived in a world that was extremely serious for a long time, right. you know. Um, but I'm not in that world right now. I'm still that serious dude, you know, I can't help it, man. It's, uh, you know, yeah. like Popeye said, I am what I am, you know. But, but by the same token, uh, I have, you know, I have fire and passion about that, you know. But go out and look at it, research the stuff, you know. It, okay. doesn't, it doesn't have to be mad and screaming because it's not about a revolution. It's about evolution. It's about waking up to the opportunities that are before us and understand that it's a very small right. group of people that are keeping us from our own opportunities, from our own society, from yeah. the production of our own, our, our own uh, minds, everything else. Okay. All right. So, and uh, so, very last question. We'll have to talk about this book in a second and then end it. But you said something about global warming. It's not really about the conversation. Do you want to expand on that? Per perfect example. You, you have you have basically three myths in global warming. The first one is, is that well, it's not happening. Get over it, guys. Every scientist is, has looked at it. It is. We see it with our own eyes. It is. The, the next one is there's something that humans can do to change it. Guess what? 
entire human civilization has come, has basically raised in the, in the current environmental epoch that we're in, about the last 13,000 years. The planet has decided that we're changing that. And some little species running around on the crust of it isn't going to be able to change it. And that's happening. So the, and that hides the biggest myth of all. And that gets back to where the, where the, the, the political process is investing. Okay? We need to invest in new infrastructure, new technology. We could revamp our entire economy by just having, we're going to have to move New York. We're going to have to move New Orleans. We're going to have to move Los Angeles. You know? we're, going to have, we're going to have to do this. And this is, these are the things that we can start doing right now. But we can't do it while you have seven of the top banks that own 75% of the productive right. assets of this country. You can't do it kind of while yeah. the federal government is basically investing in one, just one, weapon system that's going to cost a trillion dollars. Okay. Uh, it ain't well, it, happening, man. Yeah, no, you're right. And I'm sure we could talk longer about it, but I recommend everybody reads this book. So you wrote it in sort of a fictional tense, but it addresses real topics, stuff that you can relate to. So everybody, where can they check out this book or buy you, themselves You can pick this up at, uh, at uh, Amazon.com. It's on Kindle. Um, you know, we're, we're running around, and, and I, want people to, I want people to read the book. I want people to get back to me, visit me on Facebook, visit me on Twitter, on LinkedIn. You know, you think I'm wrong? Please tell me. Tell me why. You know, yeah, if you, right. if you, you get, get the conversation started, exactly, right? start see. the debate. Man. Right, let's all join together. You know, seems like a good conversation to have. So, thank you very much for coming and starting. Thanks. 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 Thanks.